hello everybody and welcome to our 56th office hours and also um, our office hour session that marks five years of Rebus Community and the Open Education Network coming together to talk about various topics in open. Um, my name is Apurva Ashok. I am um, the Director of Open Education uh, and the Assistant Director of the Rebus Foundation. I'm joining you all today from um, a very warm Toronto, from the traditional territories of um, the Mississaugas of the First Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. Um, I'm grateful to be um, meeting with you all here, celebrating with you all here today. And I'll just note that you know this particular acknowledgement is just one of the many ways in which um, my own practices and that of Freebus support decolonization and reconciliation work. Um, it's something that I'm always going to be mindful of and grateful for all of you in the committee to um, continue to push us um, to do more towards. Karen, I will pass it over to you to um, introduce yourself and I encourage the others to post as um, Caitlin has uh, in the chat, a little introduction about where you're joining and the lands you might be zooming in from. Thank you, Aperva, and hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for a very happy five years of office hours. My name is Karen Lauritsen. I'm publishing director with the Open Education Network, which is a community of people working together to make higher education more accessible and equitable. And I am joining you from San Luis Obispo, California, where the fog recently burned off. Uh, this is the traditional home of the Northern Chumash, and I'm very grateful to be here and to be um, on this land. So in today's session, uh, we are grateful that all of you have joined us and we hope that we can have a fun time together reflecting not only on where office has been, office hours has been over the last five years, but also where all of us as open ed professionals have been because hopefully this series has been a reflection of your work together as a community, as we've listened to one another and and explored different issues um, that we're all working on in this, in this line of work. So we could not have done it without you. And um, today we're going to have some fun trivia that we've pre prepared for all of you. Um, and we hope to talk about some of the challenges and rewards of the work as it is today. Maybe some of the challenges that we feel we've made some progress on in the last few years and what we hope to accomplish as a community looking forward. Um, and so with that, uh, Aperva and I thought that we would start with uh, some of our own brief reflections. So I'll go ahead and, and kick us off. Um, I was looking back at the um, office hours speaker session spreadsheet that the uh, Rebus team has um, kept such great track of everything, which I'm very thankful for because otherwise, my memory would not recall that our first ever office hours, I double checked, I'm not giving away a trivia question, was February 6, 2017. And um, one, of, one of the things that I think about when I reflect on office hours is the opportunity that I've had as a professional to partner, <clears throat> excuse me, with different people in the community who live and work in slightly different spaces. And so when we kicked off, uh, I was co-hosting with Liz Mays, who was um, working at Pressbooks and also at Rebus, and we had a great run together. And then um, Liz moved on and I started working with Zoe Wake Hyde, which was another very enjoyable period in uh, Rebus office hours. And now of course I'm working with Aperva and I've learned so much from working with the three of them and just really enjoyed um, the collegiality and relationship that comes from working with someone outside of your immediate organization. Um, but I feel like partnerships can sometimes, you know, they can be challenging. How do you have a great partnership? But this has been a really special and I think well-functioning partnership. So I'm really thankful for what we've been able to do together. And so with that, I will hand it over to Aperva and if need be, I'm sure there are more reflections I can share too. Thank you so much, Karen. It's really lovely to just hear from someone who was there from the very beginning. Um, it's hard to believe that 2016 was when we started these uh, these sessions. And I'll just echo, you know, I've enjoyed collaborating with um, you and so many other people at the Open Education Network to offer these sessions. Um, I was also looking at that that um, spreadsheet 
uh, earlier today, and uh, I was amazed to see that we have had 137 speakers from various roles in the open education space, in the education space, in the academia space, publishing space, um, come speak to us throughout the years. Um, folks who are part of the community, guests who have just come in to um, share their expertise with, with all of us um, in the open education world. Um, and that's pretty exciting. And as Amy's saying in the chat, time has flown. And yeah, it's hard to believe that 137 speakers have come in over the years. Um, for me, the office hours um, sessions have always been a um, um, an informal space for the community to come together and have a conversation. So I really appreciate how the sessions have been both a an event where you could learn about a tool that you've never heard of before or really uh, vent and talk through a particular challenge that might be very specific to your role um, in the libraries or in the institution. Um, I just appreciated also the uh, suggestions that have come in from the community. I think we started off with a series of topics that we thought would interest the community, but since then it's really been soliciting input and feedback and suggestions from, from all of you about what you wanted us to discuss next. Um, looking forward to hopefully uh, five more years of office hours. <laughs> um, and uh, I might stop there, as you said, Karen, I have plenty more reflections to share, but uh, I might go around the room and, you know, if you feel like you have something to share um, with others, um, um, please raise your hand, feel free to unmute and uh, let us know what office hours has meant to you. Susan notes in the chat that she likes lurking and learning. That's lovely. It's also a great space to, to listen and learn. And Karen has been so nice as to put in a form to solicit more topics. Uh, if, if you have ideas for office hours, um, sessions or speakers in future. And there's also a couple of people here who've been both guests and featured both guests and by guests I mean like you came to office hours and showed up but um, also featured speakers um, and so maybe uh, if you have any thoughts on what it's like to kind of come to an office hours and just be there versus come to an office hours as a speaker um, I'd be interested to hear about that experience. Or maybe there's just a hunger for trivia. Thank you, Tonya. This has been her introduction to all things open education. Tonya recently celebrated her one year with the Open Education Network. Congratulations, Tonya. And Caitlin, I saw you unmute, so please jump in. Yeah, I think Tonya said it pretty well. Um, such a good introduction to like everything open, but it's also like I always leave inspired. Every time I leave inspired because you get to meet people from maybe open communities that you're not familiar with and learn about different things and how open works outside of the box, which is really nice. So it always gives an ever never ending flow of ideas and inspiration. So that's that's a big one for me. And really a lot of people, um, I think we've had over 1500 participants or attendees at office hour sessions over the years, many more who have RSVP'd and probably more who've watched recordings shared on on our um, YouTube channel, but uh, it's pretty powerful to see how many individuals and how many different nodes and networks we've been able to tap into over the years. When I first started out with office hours, I was um, um, completing a co-op at the Rebus Foundation as an intern, so it was very much my introduction to topics like web accessibility um, or learning about Creative Commons licensing, um, being able to talk through production workflows with folks. Um, Jim notes that they are a first time visitor. So welcome, Jim. Um, it's lovely to, uh, to meet you and uh, uh, love to learn more about the work you're doing at um, Rhode Island and the OER initiative there. And if there's anything that you want to use this space in coming months uh, to, to tap into and speak about. Hey, well, thank you. I said I have been involved from the beginning in Rhode Island and 
we formed a uh, statewide task force when the governor announced an OER initiative. Uh, and I, I started because I was interested in saving money uh, for students, but it, it occurred to me early on that it, it's about equity and opportunity. It's much about money and, you know, and uh, our students uh, come from a variety of uh, needs and, and sources and, and they, they need, you know, help, more help than the students I had when I was at Providence College. But uh, speaking to, I forget who it was at Lee about your wine, um, I can appreciate it because when I'm not playing librarian, I'm a winemaker. And uh, sometimes it's the high point of my life. <laughs> nice. I think we'll need an um, office hours dedicated to, to hidden talents of the, of the OER <laughs> library fields soon. That's a good topic. The office hours have been a good introduction for me too. I'm very, I'm pretty new to the field, and I've all I, the ones I've attended. I've appreciated the welcoming feeling like it seems easy to enter and speak and contribute and that I learn from the speakers but also I've learned a lot from the participants and what they share in the office hours so I like that. Thanks Phoebe, same here. <clears throat> it's always great to hear everybody's stories and um, you know even even as uh, a co-host who's been here many many times like it's still nice for me to feel that same welcoming spirit like it's just I think this sort of communal nature of the work that people are trying to accomplish and I really appreciate that too. Susan says um, she's going to be collaborating with some folks in universal design for learning and higher education to present on using voice recognition in academic work and create OER materials to share. Cool. The reviewers were especially excited about the OER aspect. Susan, that sounds like a great project. Is there anything more you want to say about that? Or, nah. <laughs> okay, super. I don't know, Perva. I'm getting antsy. I'm, I'm excited about the interview. I'll, I'll, I'll let everyone into the trivia room shortly, uh, but I might just um, <laughs> add on to what um, Phoebe was saying and note that um, We've had sessions at office hours ranging from very small 10 person intimate sessions to large 90 to 100 person um, um, webinars. Um, but with each of them, it's really been the, the attendees and the participants in the room and sort of the stories that they bring that that really make the experience. It's less about, you know, the the, the topic at hand or who we've um, co collaborated with to, to um, introduce those topics as a guest speaker, but really about um, the group of people um, and how they guide the conversation. I also just maybe will note um, all of our office hours uh, sessions, including this one, always have a corresponding um, forum space where the discussion can be continued. And in fact, um, we've had a few office hour sessions that um, have been asynchronous to better um, reach the more global open education community that might not always be awake between the hours of 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so there's always opportunity to continue that conversation um, with folks to meet new people in that Rebus forum space. And hopefully this is something we'll always have a live session with individuals, but a space for asynchronous conversation afterwards. And if, if folks maybe want to do a little bit of a drum roll, I can share my screen and we can dive into <laughs> what we prepared a short, I think five or six question, uh, trivia about office hours. So you're going to see the instructions on this slide here. Let me also drop a link into the chat for anyone who wants to hop in um, to this poll. I'm seeing folks are coming in right now. Cheryl, Jonathan, welcome. You have come right in time for, for trivia. Um, you can go to www.menti.com and type in the code five four four three five six four eight you can scan this qr code with another device if you have one handy 
Um, or you can use the link that I have just dropped into the chat once again here. Um, I will note all of the questions are multiple choice. So you needn't have attended office hours before to, uh, to work your way up the leaderboard. You can really just use uh, probability to, to help you out here and chance. Um, I see six people maybe are in here. If anyone has trouble getting into this um, mentee space, please let us know. Super competitive segment. Oh, well, we already have 10 people in here. So I'm gonna get us started then with uh, question one of six. And remember, in order to get the maximum number of points, you need um, to get the right answer. So what was the most popular topic um, that we've ever hosted with office hours based on uh, the attendance numbers, based on how many people were in the room? Was it um, more than a button getting open textbooks into print? Was it the invisible labor of OER? Or was it license two dot 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 on uh, open licensing? And you have about a minute to, to mull over answers. Feel free to unmute and maybe have a little bit of conversation if, if you want to convince somebody else that uh, uh, one or the other had the most attendance. This is tricky. <laughs> what are you leaning towards? I don't know. Did anyone here attend any of these? Well, yeah, I remember I the invisible always... labor because I attended that one from a bus to Salem to go to a hearing. <laughs> that is dedication. Were there a lot it of people there? Labor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like being on transport. Transportation between cities in Oregon was invisible labor. <laughs> we should have added a, what is the weirdest place that you've attended office hours from? Well, the answer was actually getting OER into print, uh, getting open textbooks into print. Um, that sounds like two, two of you on this, on this call have managed to get that right. Um, six of you did think it was the invisible labor of OER. Um, which looks like it was Lee's favorite session, regardless of attendance numbers. Do you want to tell us why, Lee? Oh, I link to it all the time when I'm writing about okay, uh, um, OER, just because I think that like the it's one of the the great unseen problems, um, given that it is invisible. It's just a very useful session in the future, and hopefully, work that won't be invisibilized. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, to the eight people who might not have gotten this right, there's still plenty of chances for you to, to move ahead. So I guess we can move on to question two, two of six. Which topic had the most RSVPs? What were people most interested in coming and learning about? Was it accessibility for open textbooks? Was it again, getting open textbooks into print? Or was it instructional design and OER? I wish I had the, you know, the, the Jeopardy countdown music in the background. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I, I appreciate the subtle difference in, the, in these two questions. The first one is how many people showed up? And then this one is how, you know, how the most number of RSVPs, which turns out is not the same. And it, people were most interested in that instructional design and OER session. Um, I can even maybe, Karen, I can ask you to pull up the numbers. How many did sure. we have for that Let's, particular session? That was, doo -doo -doo -doo. hold on, I have to move all my little chat windows. Um, I like that everybody sidestepped um, of, uh, getting open textbooks into print um, because it did have the, the highest attendance, but maybe not the highest RSVPs. There were 95. 95, yeah. And yes, Jonathan, the license to phrase was very much um, intentional using it to talk about the license to whatever else it might be, but the license to publish openly, the license to use the five R's. 
Yeah, as you can see, um, with this particular question, it seemed like maybe early on folks were very um, curious to learn more about accessibility. And we had actually a number of different office hour sessions on um, web accessibility, on building accessibility into workflows. Um, but it uh, seemed like as, as we kept doing more office hours, um, instructional design became sort of the next gap that people wanted to learn more about. Um, and we were actually very lucky to have um, I believe it was Veronica Bold and others um, at this session telling us more about um, how to build that into, into our production workflows. Yeah, one of the other interesting things about that is the accessibility session, which was the second most popular, was back in 2017. And then um, the next kind of big number here is the instructional design and OER, which was just this year. I Come was back. wondering about the date. So mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting to hear that. Yeah. Um, and I think we can get a chance to look at the leader, leaderboard here. And it looks like Sue and whoever is our, our vote goat, they're really taking taking the uh, uh, taking the lead right now. Um, Beyonce is a close second, so I appreciate um, appreciate that. Uh, and KS as well, and all of the others. There's there's still hope for you all yet. <laughs> Don't worry, Cheryl, everyone is a, is a winner here. <laughs> okay, moving on to, to question three. Is everybody ready? All right, remember, you have to get the right answer to get the maximum number of points. Which of the following people were featured guests at the very first office hour session? Was it Amanda Coolidge uh, from BC campus? Was it Steele Wagstaff, who's now at Pressbooks? Was it Robin DeRosa from Plymouth State? Or was it all three? And Karen, can we reveal that the topic for that session or would that be too much of a hint? <laughs> um, the topic was, let's see how many people have weighed in. It is a pretty good hint, but that we're all friends it. here. I, I, it was um, making open textbooks with students. That would have given it to me. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I should change my answer. <laughs> all right, seven of you got that right, so woohoo. Um, it was all three of them, um, really a great panel, like all of ours have been. Um, and uh, that was, when did you say, Karen, when in 2016, February 2016? Um, it was February 6, 2017. 2017, five years, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right and like i said one of the 137 uh three of the 137 speakers we've had to date moving on if folks are ready to question number four of six how many total recorded sessions do we have the key word here being recorded <laughs> is it 55 is it 52 or is it 48? And you'll note 60 is not an option because we typically take a month or two off every year for office hours. So despite the fact that it's been going for, for five years, we don't have 60 sessions. We've also had a couple um, Halloween horror sessions that we decided not to record so that people felt they could speak freely about some of the more challenging aspects of their work. Mm -hmm. And some international perspectives on office hours that were asynchronous as well, so folks could participate from different time zones around the world. I would be surprised if folks were keeping track of this, so I, I think that the, the lucky guess <laughs> winners will really take the cake with this one. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know this myself, Karen, I don't nope. know if you do. <laughs> nope. And no going to the YouTube page. <laughs> and all guesses here. Well, the, the guesses are really working well for you, Sue. They are working well for you. All right. The answer was 52 out of 56, I think, sessions were recorded. Um, you've always been a good test taker. We, we need to, to bottle up whatever it is you have and share it out widely. <laughs> um, 
I think as as Karen said, it was those two OER um, horror stories sessions and the two international perspectives and office hours ones that uh, we decided not to record so that folks could speak a little more freely. All right, I think we're going to take another look at the leaderboard to see if anyone has been able to oust um, Sue and, and vote goat. Ooh, Cheryl, I see you on here. That's fantastic. Um, looks like there's been quite a bit of change. So you are really taking uh, <laughs> the lead. <laughs> Heartstorm, Zlatan, Boat Goat, great. Um, Lee, we're gonna be rooting for you <laughs> with these final two questions. <laughs> um, and Elizabeth, I know you're just coming in now, but if you wanted to hop in uh, to join our little trivia poll, you are more than welcome to. I think we have a couple of questions left. All right, moving on to question number five. Five of six. What is the office hour Twitter hashtag? Now this one you should get Lee because you coined it for us back when you were working at Trebus. Is it hashtag office hours? Is it hashtag OER office hours? Or is it hashtag Rebus, O-E-N-O-H? I think there was an option with Mentimeter, which is the tool we're using for this poll to um, award points based on who answers the fastest and to sort of scale things up that way. But that, that just didn't seem like we needed the pressure. <laughs> I had to make myself guess and not try to go to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's tempting right it is tempting but hopefully hopefully you will all get get this 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 answer let's see all right six of you did guess correctly it is in fact hashtag oer office hours um i think we we may have gone with hashtag office hours, but um, it's a popular term. It's a popular phrase. A lot of people, especially on Twitter, are using it. So we had to carve out our own niche with the OER piece. Um, and Rebus OENOH was just too many acronyms for folks to figure out. Well, what is the OEN? Is it oh no, Rebus <laughs> oh no, or is it something else? <laughs> I'll try it. Lee, did you manage to get that? <laughs> was also OTN at the time. Yes, with the name change. True, true. <laughs> and Jim notes, even a blind squirrel can find a nut and that's been their strategy. So good going, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try, I believe this next one is our final question. So um, hope you all have your um, fingers ready to pick and select. The question six out of six is, What do Karen and I ask for at the end of nearly every session at office hours? Do we ask for donations? Do we ask for happy thoughts? Or do we ask for your input for future topics? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, I'm glad you like that one. <laughs> I hope you're all, you all have Karen and my voice in voices in your head. So thank you everybody. Thank you to our speakers. And before we go, please take a moment. Oh, Cheryl, I'm, I'm happy to hear this. The only one you didn't have to guess on. And Jim, this might be a little unfair because I know this is the first time you're attending, but hopefully you've had a little bit of a preview. <laughs> yes, there was a hint earlier in the session, a giveaway even. Yeah, I had not actually been to the end of any of them, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay, the confidence is high with this question, which, which I'm really pleased about for anyone else who is yet to submit. 
15 second countdown. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> well, we always oh. ask for your input, which everybody seemed to get. Um, although I will take happy thoughts anytime. <laughs> pass those along too. <laughs> always yeah, welcome. Okay. Um, and Karen, maybe this is a nice time to drop that um, form in again for anybody who missed it earlier, who joined us late. Um, we genuinely want your suggestions for future topics. You'll see from this preview of my of my work window here. We have a document, many documents to plan future office hour sessions. We're always eager to hear about um, people that you would like to, to bring to these sessions and spotlight as a speaker or topics, no matter how niche or how general um, you'd like um, to bring to the attention of the community. And I think with that, it's maybe time to reveal our winner for, for today, who is many of you. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, it's Sue. Sue took it away with, um, with all of her answers at the start. So congratulations, Sue. Congratulations. For the hashtag OER office hours trivia champion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have one final question um, for all of you as, um, as you're thinking about office hours and thinking about um, perhaps the ways in which you've interacted with Rebus and OEN at these sessions over the years. So if there's anything that you'd like to provide in terms of a testimonial for, for Rebus and OEN about the impact that it might have had, um, please let us know. And I'll say this uh, is definitely going to help us keep in mind, um, again, the types of sessions we want to have in future. Um, it hopefully can also be a way for us to um, solicit some um, input from um, folks in the field to keep this going for another five years. So it's always helpful to be able to demonstrate the impact of, of these sessions. So if there's anything you feel like you want to share and can share, you're welcome to add, add that into this uh, session of the poll. Someone just says, just knowing it's out there is, is comfort in and of itself. So thank you. <laughs> And I'll let you all think, and I'm happy to stop screen sharing if you don't want me to, to, to share these responses out loud right now. <laughs> well, one of you notes, the OER community is so generous and supportive and Office Hours has been a great way to learn, connect and share. And that makes me happy um, to hear. So thank you so much for that. Uh, it's also been a lovely learning opportunity for me. And Karen, I'll let you read some of these as well. It doesn't need to just be me. <laughs> yeah, well, um, thank you for this third comment. Uh, thanks for hosting these conversations for many years. It's an opportunity to hear from a wide range of people about their work, indeed. And, um, you know, it it is, I think, uh, meaningful for the whole planning team when we are joined by people like you who come to the sessions and you know ask questions and, and share experiences you know often we'll say that in addition to the three or four guests who are there to you know kind of kick us off at the beginning there's also so much shared knowledge and experience in the entire room and the whole group and so it really makes a difference when we hear from all of you and and can engage with you together on these topics. So thank you. Um, a couple more have come in. Listening to others is a learning experience for me, absolutely. Um, it really informs a lot of what I do in my role at the OEN is through listening and, and hearing what people need and what they're working on. Um, office hours is a really important place for participating in a community. It feels more genuine and human than most places on the interwebs. Yeah, it's a rough, wild interweb world. So it, I'm, I'm glad to hear that together we've created an environment um, that feels genuine and human. It can be, you know, really hard to do that over, uh, over a screen. So we do what we can and it really helps that, that we can do it together. Let's see, uh, Office Hours has been a great resource in my OER learning journey. Thank you for sharing, that's awesome. I think that's true for all of us here. And I think there's one, one more that I um, have to read. Definitely the community building has been the most important for me, getting to know the folks who are doing the practical work 
and who can therefore give me incredibly specific suggestions either during office hours or later when I bug them by email. Yes, I mean, it's so great to basically have a, have a space where you can get very specific recommendations or resources. Like you said, there's often so many things being shared in the chat, so many templates that you can take and do with whatever you need. And also there's, it sounds like a little bit of kind of that, that hallway experience that you might get um, either at your workplace or at a conference where you can sort of connect with somebody and then exchange contact information and, and build that relationship. So that's really exciting. Caitlin, I see. Yeah, I thought, I thought I'd pose a question to all of you. And if you haven't been to office hours yet, or if you've only been to a couple, maybe think of what you would want it to be. But I would be curious to hear what each of your biggest takeaway from an office hour session was. I know that's a big answer. So if, if you want, I'll answer first. <laughs> um, it was actually, I think, the last session um, about policies to support OER and all of the conversation around OER sustainability. I'll pop the link to the video in the, in the chat, but it was a brilliant, it blew my mind. It, it, I can't stop thinking about it truthfully. Um, just hearing from both speakers of what their idea of OER sustainability looks like and how how to kind of think outside of the box with that was brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, if anyone else has. Um, that was a, a, a great session, Sam session. Yes, Amy, the recording is always available. Um, I think a uh, key takeaway for me, it's always just been just the generosity of, of the community and the willingness to share everything from <clears throat> um, spreadsheets and templates and documents that are really in the works to, um, to advice and suggestions to avoid the pitfalls that someone else might have, have dropped into. Um, Lee is noting in the chat um, for her, it was the one on tenure and promotions that was very valuable. Um, she says it was good to see the different strategies that people made um, as they were making a case for the value of OER. Again, it's that reinventing the wheel and hearing what others, uh, not needing to reinvent the wheel and hearing what others have done. What about anyone else in the room? Are there big takeaways or reflections that are coming to mind right now? I have a super pragmatic one. I'm pretty sure it was in that um, how to print OER session that I first learned about the printme1.com that is positioning itself to be like for one-off OER printing. Um, so, you know, just in that vein of like always learning from, from others about new tools and what they're using to get the work done. Amy notes that she's always glad to see when Oregon folks are invited as speakers because they have some amazing talent there. You definitely do, Amy. Um, I also love when we're able to um, highlight and spotlight um, maybe speakers who are very new to OER, speakers who are early career, um, or who might be uh, otherwise uh, maybe historically excluded by virtue of their identity or their work. Um, we always want to make sure that the opportunity to come, whether it's attend OERs or speak at OERs is, is really open to all. And we're always looking for new speakers. Um, I think that's oftentimes the hardest part with the planning team, um, Karen, isn't that right? Is, not just landing on the topic and seeing, you know, what what does the community want to be focusing on right now, but who can we invite? And the first question is always, has this person spoken before? If so, mm -hmm. let's look for someone who hasn't had a chance to come in and talk about these topics because we always want to be hearing from new voices. Yeah, that's right. You know, we don't want to rely only on our own circle or our own network. It's really valuable to you know, hear from others about maybe a conference or a presentation that they went to and 
um, a speaker that they heard who was really compelling or had something useful and important to share. And so in the input form that um, we have shared throughout this session and every session, that's another field. Like maybe you don't even have a specific topic in mind, but there was a speaker who you saw at a conference or a webinar or another event, and you're like, gosh, I want to hear more from that person. That's useful uh, information for us, and we can get to know them and see you know, what topics might fit in. So please feel free to share um, speaker suggestions as well so that we including can- Including yourself. Including yourself, absolutely. So that we can um, you know, hear as many voices as possible. Cheryl's speaker, oh, go. before you share Cheryl's point, I'll say if you were a former speaker, you'll know that a lot of the times you'll have the office hours planning team email you to solicit suggestions for new speakers. So we're always trying to, as uh, Karen said, uh, cast the net wide. Um, the office hours speaker casting call is is open to all. It's an open casting. Anyone can come in anytime. <laughs> I like that. No audition required. <laughs> Cheryl's takeaway from office hours is that uh, she's not alone and many of us are struggling with similar challenges indeed. I appreciate when colleagues share ideas I can try. Absolutely. Thank you all so much for, for sharing some of your own reflections about office hours. It's, it's really uh, lovely to pause and just take some time to think about where we've been together. Um, the, the fact that five years has passed um, during during these office hour sessions. And it's just nice to share that kind of pause with all of you. So thank you for coming and, and talking with us. Thank you. And, you know, as we're sort of coming to the end of our hour, maybe we're moving to that last bit of, of our prompt for today, which is uh, what do we hope to accomplish in the next five years? Um, do you all have any uh, hopes and dreams for office hours that you want to share or for the open community that you think office hours could be a good tool and medium through which to advance towards that that line of work. That's a really tough one. Like that's a, a pretty, I think my mind just went in a hundred different directions. Um, but when I like the idea of those asynchronous ones of getting the like international open community together and the idea of of more of that really like connecting everyone, however that looks. I think that's something that is really exciting and seeing how we can move open further, <laughs> like beyond just in the like as a textbook, I think seeing how we can go open policies at like state levels, country levels, con world levels, <laughs> maybe just figured I'd go all the way, right? Um, but yeah, that's something I'm, I'm pretty excited about because it's so incredibly validating to meet other people who are just as passionate about open education. And I think with that comes a lot of really great ideas and I'm looking forward to seeing what ideas come out of that. Thank you, Caitlin. It looks like there's a uh, resounding yes uh, in the chat from, from attendees uh, with both those ideas to push open beyond just textbooks and also beyond academia, perhaps more into practices and policies. Um, and I can maybe see Karen taking notes as, as, as you're, you were sharing. <laughs> Does anyone else have any big grand dreams for office hours that they'd like to plant right now? Plant the seeds for? Well, if it does come to mind, you know that you can always get in touch with us. More trivia, Karen says. <laughs> we'll host another 56 sessions and come back with trivia. Um, but I was going to know if you uh, wanted to use that Twitter hashtag to tag us as and when ideas come to mind. Um, this happens often where folks just say, oh, I think this could make for an interesting office hour session. What do you think? Just use that hashtag, which I think all of you got, which is hashtag OER office hours. Um, or get in touch. Um, you can chat with us on the Rebus forum 
or if you are someone who just loves an email, um, you can send us an email at contact at rebus.community or uh, Karen's email, which is K-L-A-U-R-I-T-S, K-Lauritz at umn.edu. <laughs> Amy loves an email. I'm with you, Amy. Thank you, Lee, to 56 more. Cheers, here, here. And I think um, this brings us to the end of the hour. Thank you again for celebrating with us. This has been really fun. And here's to the next five years. So um, I wish you all a good weekend and a good summer. We will take a break in July and join you again in August with a new topic, perhaps one that we may get from that form that you all filled out as part of the celebration. And I uh, look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.